This is the Continuum Lab. I'm Jeppe, musician, maker and your host on this visit. In today's video I get into the software and synthesizer setup of the Openhorn MIDI system, my main project in the lab. I also briefly describe how I use the Teensy microcontroller, the brain inside the Openhorn. But first, a short disclaimer. The Continuum has no end and no beginning. It represents the sum total of all knowledge, stretching from the unnoticeably small and to the incomprehensibly vast. So the Continuum Lab is not really a physical space at all. I think of it as a state of mind, like a mental leap of faith from the comfortable platform of the known and into the infinite ignorance, where learning is the only method of propulsion. Welcome to the Continuum Lab. The Ohms runs on a microcontroller, specifically the Teensy 3.2 made by PJRC. Now there are three main reasons why the Teensy is perfect for this project. First of all, it's fast. It's much, much faster than any of the Arduino boards that I've used in the past. Second of all, it has built-in USB MIDI, which is insanely practical when you're building a MIDI controller. And third of all, it has built-in capacitive touch keys, uh, which are super easy to implement in code and hardware. Now, even with the multitude of sensors on the open horn, I'm still using only the most easily accessible pins on the microcontroller itself, leaving the solder pads and less accessible pins uh, for future expansions. The micro USB plug on the Teensy microcontroller is not used in the open horn. Instead, a more sturdy USB B port is connected via four solder pads on the microcontroller and then made accessible at the base of the horn. So you plug in a USB cable and then connect to a computer or synth module which then receives the MIDI signal from the open horn while providing it with power. In my case I plug into a, an i5 laptop running Ubuntu 18 plus a selection of open source software that allows me to do pretty much anything I can imagine. So let's get into it. My main go-to software synthesizer is Yoshimi, which is super powerful and works great with the wind MIDI signal. Next to that I usually run a looper, in this case it's Super Looper, and if I want to record I will have a digital audio workstation running as well. I like Ardour, which is what I'm recording with right now. To tie all of this together and connect the different channels of the programs, I run Jack, which has an easy to use interface for just this. My laptop is not super powerful. I don't have a real-time kernel installed, I'm running standard Ubuntu, not Ubuntu Studio or anything like that, but after some minimal customization, mostly to do with the Linux user groups, everything works just fine. Yoshimi doesn't come with many synths specifically prepared for a wind MIDI controller, but I was able to easily adapt many synths to respond really well to this type of signal and then customize further. As the open horn has the capacity to play two voices simultaneously, I always have an active synth both on channel 1 and on channel 2. If only one voice is playing, then only channel 1 is sounding. But having the voices on separate channels allows me to also use separate patches, so I can have different instruments on each voice. Channel 3 is reserved for the open horn percussive mode signal and so I always have a drum or percussion patch running on channel 3. Meanwhile, Superlooper is reading on channel 4 and the open horn has been set up to produce a signal on channel 4 from the side keys and the encoder. So now I can simultaneously play one or two voices and activate the looper while I do so. Then change to percussive mode and build up the loop further. Then back to the horn mode for a solo. All from the open horn itself, without pedals or other peripherals. The outputs can be customized on the open horn by the user and saved in presets, so you can adapt them to whatever your setup is. But of course, Superlooper and Yoshimi also have MIDI Learn functionality, so I'm basically able to set the outputs of the open horn to whatever I want and then simply learn them in the software. 
So I hope you can see how this setup gives me a lot of creative freedom and it's also just super fun to play. In the next video titled History Lesson, I will explain how the open horn MIDI system started in the first place and also give a brief account of my own background. See you soon.